Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. In today's session, let's talk about our new indicator, RSI Impact Heat Map. So this is a very simple indicator. Uh, and what we do here is uh, we try to capture certain RSI event, such as crossover of 70 or cross under of 30 or whatever um, the user configures here. And then we'll wait for a certain number of bars and measure what is the positive price moment and negative price moment in that uh, particular number of bars and plot it here in the chart. So if the x-axis here represents positive price moment and the y-axis here represents negative price moment. Like, you know, if the price dropped after that particular event, you'll see more um, more plots on, the, on this quadrant, like QQ to quadrant, uh, because the price dropped and price didn't increase and if you see uh, if if it led to a bullish event and price went up then you'll see more data on this quadrant and you'll see, you can see that um you know this quadrant that price went up and it didn't go down by much and this quarter is kind of extreme um price moments you know this quadrant we can say that price went up as well as went down in that particular um you know on that particular instances and uh, it led to high um, high volatility, that kind of thing. So, um, and also these are, uh, um, this is actually a, a scatter plot implementation using a heat map, since Pine doesn't provide um, another, uh, you know, um, better ways to implement a scatter plot, you know, tried tried using the tables to implement this, um, implement this way. Also, uh, please note that uh, the distribution of the points, like for example, every sample is uh, marked on a cell and you can see that some cells are brighter and some are darker. So brighter cells means there's more distribution that if you look at this, the count is five here out of 444. But if you look at the lighter ones, there's only one. So it depends on the, um, depends on the distribution the cells are also more brighter so that you know by looking at this chart you can actually um, say that what actually happens after um, a crossover of rsi crossover 70 what actually what generally happens after rsi crossover of 70 right so the more points uh, is there like you know this is the more um, you know most uh, most feasible possible occurrence um, and uh, least possible occurrences there's like you know there's not much happens like not many times the price went in both directions most of the times uh, price moment is below the median price moment um also um so the quadrants like you know um if you divide this chart into four for example um i marked these lines and uh, just for the reference so it's half of y-axis and half of y-axis so this quadrant here is q1 which is an area of high x and high y and this uh, this quadrant is q2 which is high y and low x and this is q3 where both x and y are relatively low and this is q4 where um, x is higher and y is low so with respect to our example here uh, we have plotted positive price moment over x-axis and negative price moment over y-axis so if um if um, if more plots are found under this quadrant uh, which is um, q4 quadrant that means that uh, the event is more bullish and if you find more plots under this quadrant which is q2 quadrant that means that um the event is more bearish and if you find more data under this quadrant or this quadrant that means that you know um it's not tradable those events are like you know it doesn't make much meaning out of this Right, so um, more plots under Q3 can be um, can be solved, but if you find more plots under Q4, that means that it's definitely not tradable because it's a very high volatility environment, um, and these events will not be uh, you know will not be able to predict which way the price will go and all. Okay, so um, and by looking at the input variables here, right? So uh, we already mentioned we can select a trigger here and the duration and the reference. So you can measure price moment in terms of ATR or in terms of percentage. So if you say ATR, so the price moments are captured as number of times the ATR. You can see that 5.61X to 5.79X, something like that. So if I change it to percentage now, what happens is, 
look at this and 8.26 percent onwards or 1.3 to 1.49 percent negative displacement so it will this will provide the data in terms of percentage instead of um, providing it in, term, in terms of um, number of times the ATR right so and if you want to increase the duration you can increase like let's say your trading duration is more than 20 bars so you can actually make it 100 bars so not 1000 100 bars so if you do that then it will try to um, capture the information based on that like you know after 100 bars how many times the price um, like you know um, what is the maximum price displacement displacement on a uh, positive side and negative side so both are captured here you can see that um, this quadrant has a little bit higher number now after 100 days uh, but you know um, this crossover 70 like generally considered as a workout condition and you can see that clearly that um, the more number of instances it actually led to bullish um, you know bullish environments right so 73 times the price went down but 127 times price went up but even with that you can say that um, 230, 235 number of times the price didn't go anywhere like you know it's below the median so to solve this issue there's one thing which you can do is um, you can reduce the outlier percentage so the outlier is defined as this so outlier means that if you include 100 percent what happens is uh, most of the this most of the um, you know plots are distributed in q3 that's because uh, these boundaries are um, generated based on the samples like you know the maximum um, x and y in the samples based on that these boundaries are selected but you can see that the number of items here is very less right so um, it doesn't generally give a meaningful uh, plot a meaningful um, uh, chart which is uh, uh, and we cannot we cannot uh, interpret anything with this we cannot say that you know that it leads to bullish more bullish environment or bearish environments so what we have to do is we have to reduce the number of outliers so also let me make it to ATR so that uh, this is what I used so if you look at 100 for ATR it's very clear like most of the things happen here so there's nothing here almost nothing here zero and zero but there are since there is one occurrence here uh, which led to 80x displacement in 20 bars that's pretty uh, that's pretty extreme so because of that it actually um, created the uh, boundaries or created the uh, scale this high so for that what we need to do is in order to reduce the uh, outliers what we have done is we have only considered first 95 percentile right so that means that these extreme things will be ignored while creating the boundaries right and that boundary is like you know whatever is atx will be added to this this particular place but uh, you know it was not considered it will not be considered as a um, um for for selecting your boundaries x values scale and y value scales so with 95 you have this again like you know 273 times um, it's in the still in the third quadrant and 104 more times bullish and less times bearish but still we cannot determine anything because most of the distribution here is in this region right third quadrant so you can reduce it further let's say let's reduce it to 80 and see what happens so you can see that it's decreased a lot now and these three have increased meanwhile so you can see that 181 times it's bullish and 132 times bearish and 43 times um, it's more um, more volatile so with this it's still uh, you know it's difficult to say that it's um, you know overall it generates a bullish environment you can probably reduce it much for much less and say 70 and this is probably the most we can go and 180 143 and it actually increased this part and didn't really increase this part much so um overall it says that you know um you cannot use this rsi crossover 70 as a reliable parameter to go either long or short because most of the times yes you're going to fail like um if you if you go long you can see that um 94 plus 143 which is like 240 uh 230 seven times will will actually end up being stopped whereas 180 times will will be like you know your trade will be successful and 27 times you know you'll go nowhere so it's it may reduce more 
uh, losses instead of more um, profit. And similarly, you cannot definitely cannot go into um, short as well because this number itself is um, higher than what we have for the bearish uh, environment. Okay, so we discussed this and the heat map size, um, it just says how many number of rows and columns uh, we need to have. We can actually increase it much a um, little bit up to 90. It will take more space as well. And um, it won't really matter much if we are, um, uh, if we increase, um, because anyway, uh, we'll try to fit all the data and these heat maps, like, you know, these plots will have the higher count if there's really a higher count and all these things. So it really doesn't matter much. Um, go with um, whatever size you feel, uh, you feel you're comfortable. But if you make it to less like 10, uh, it may be like, you know, uh, to be very uh, congested look at this it's very congested so you may not get much information out of this as well so try to increase it uh, but you don't need to really increase it much um, too much so i've set 50 as a default value uh, you can use it or you can actually alter based on your preferences right so we discussed about duration trigger reference and all these things and um, that's probably it i believe um and that's all about this indicator um and this is actually a general concept like you know you don't need to work only uh, for rsi you can actually um take this concept and implement it on any of the entry conditions right you know you have your own strategy you can you can um, use that entry condition also uh, and prepare a similar plot um but ideally like you know if uh, if this is available as a library which will be more meaningful I look forward to implement this as a library so that um you know users can a uh, programmers can use it um under their own um for their own implementations of their own conditions right so it can it can also be like you know used for moving average uh, moving average cursors or any other things that you want to test you can use it for the, those things as well uh, one thing I want to highlight um, is that this particular information here is incorrect. Uh, that's because initially when I implemented, I started my x-axis here, like, you know, x and y-axis here. So y-axis moved from this way, as same as this, same as the present one, but the y-axis moved from top to bottom. So based on that, I provided this information, but later I changed this implementation to start um, zero our zero zero coordinate from here so that's a generic uh, convention uh, so that it will be more intuitive um because of that you know this uh, this particular information doesn't hold true anymore uh, sorry uh it doesn't hold true anymore and uh, instead what i suggest is refer uh, the description which i mentioned in the main chart so q1 q2 q3 q4 and what it means and all i mentioned it here so i can use that instead Okay, um, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks very much. Have a good day. Bye.